Ripple is hiring a senior policy director in the U.S. to lead government relations and strategic counsel on regulatory matters. By the way, a recent analysis shows that XRP market capitalization has lost over $2 billion in seven days following a court ruling that could impact its legal status. Also, XRP traders remain bullish on the asset's prospects despite the recent unfavorable performance, as evidenced by the dominance of long traders on Huobi. Finally, where did Judge Rakoff get it all wrong? Keep watching this video to find out more so that you don't miss out on an excellent opportunity to win a giveaway of 300 XRP tokens at the end of this month. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiteboard Crypto Update, the best spot for your daily dose of everything XRP and cryptocurrency. In today's video, we will talk about XRP's future. So be sure to stay focused as you surely don't want to miss out on this. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. Please remember this is not a financial advice video. Ripple, the leading blockchain technology company, is searching for a senior policy director in the United States to spearhead its crucial efforts in engaging with policymakers at the federal and state levels. The job ad was posted to Ripple's career page noting that the company's public policy team aims to manage relations with government agencies. The firm also seeks to provide strategic counsel on regulatory matters that impact Ripple's diverse business interests. This leadership role will be integral in shaping the company's public policy objectives within the U.S. and nurturing essential relationships with external stakeholders to advance those objectives. Recall that Ripple recently hired Amazon's chief financial officer to join its board of directors. According to the announcement, the senior policy director will create avenues for Ripple to interact with key players in the regulatory sphere, including legislators and thought leaders. The director must collaborate with internal business partners to grasp Ripple's operations, intricacies, and offer expert guidance on the potential implications of public policy developments. The successful candidate must keep a keen eye on legislative and regulatory initiatives in the U.S. and take proactive steps to support or influence them. Establishing solid relationships with federal and state stakeholders will be paramount to driving Ripple's advocacy efforts forward. Also on the agenda for the director is building an extensive network among external stakeholders, which includes trade associations, non-public organizations, and industry counterparts. Ripple desires its senior policy director to note digital assets and blockchain-related policy issues. The ad further noted that candidates with experience in senior public or policy roles within the tech, enterprise software, payments, or financial services sectors will have a distinct advantage. Moreover, Ripple will strongly consider individuals with a background in congressional and executive branch positions. Likewise, those with pre-existing relationships with policymakers and regulators are at an advantage. Ripple also requires the senior policy director to have stellar written and verbal communication skills to liaise with the CEO's office, the executive leadership team, and other senior stakeholders. This director position presents interested candidates with the opportunity to serve in one of the best-rated workplaces in the tech space. Specifically, Ripple has recently been ranked among the top 100 best work environments. Notably, Ripple president Monica Long said in a recent interview with CNBC that the firm has started re-engaging with the U.S. markets following the recent clarity from the U.S. court. The hiring seems to be part of Ripple's plan to expand in the U.S. In the most recent twist of the crypto tides, over $2 billion has evaporated from XRP's once ascendant market capitalization within the last seven days. According to data from market tracker CoinMarketCap, XRP had a market cap of over $37 billion as of July 30, while trading above $0.07. However, at least $2.3 billion of that market share has disappeared as of today. Specifically, XRP now exchanges hands for around $0.66, with a significant seven-day cumulative decline of over 7%. This puts its market cap at $34.8 billion. 
Similarly, its once formidable 24-hour trading volume may be crashing below the $1 billion value with the continuous downtrend. Furthermore, XRP traders demonstrate strong confidence in the asset despite the latest price drop. Notably, XRP is down 29% from the high of $0.93 on July 13, but more futures traders continue to initiate long positions on XRP. This trend suggests the sustenance of bullish sentiments. A recent disclosure from Hobi reveals that more accounts on the platform are initiating long positions, with XRP securing a spot among the top five assets, with most accounts holding long positions on the platform's futures market. Per the revelation, 59% of the accounts trading XRP on Hobi hold long positions. This figure places XXRP third on the list of assets boasting a predominance of long traders. XRP sits above Bitcoin and Ethereum on the list despite both assets outperforming XRP over the past seven days. While XRP is down 7.4% in the last week, BTC is trading flat within the same time frame, and Ethereum is facing a meager loss of 1.3%. However, only 54% of Bitcoin traders on Huobi are going long. In addition, Ethereum is facing more short traders, with long traders representing a discouraging 46% of trades. The fact that XRP has a higher rate of long traders than Bitcoin and Ethereum implies that investors are more optimistic and bullish about the future price of XRP compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. A predominance of traders holding long positions indicates that investors expect the asset's value to rise. It is important to note that this metric represents the rate of traders or accounts holding long positions and not the rate of long positions themselves. When it comes to a comparison of long and short positions themselves, XRP's futures trades are 47.6% long. However, XRP still beats Bitcoin 46.6%, and Ethereum, 44.3%, in this metric. Meanwhile, XRP remains bearish, down 2.06% over the past 24 hours as it changes hands at $0.65. Several analysts have forecasted further dips, but these forecasts remain uncertain projections of the asset's trajectory and should not be considered investment advice. It was recently reported one of these predictions where a prominent analyst on TradingView asserted that XRP could plummet to $0.58 over the next five months. However, he stressed that the asset would stage a recovery from this dip. Now to big question of the day, where did Judge Rakoff get it all wrong? Pro-XRP lawyer John Deaton has weighed in on the debate regarding U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff's ruling in the SEC's terror ruling. Recall that Judge Rakoff disagreed with Judge Annalisa Torres' reasoning in the Ripple case. He focused on Judge Torres' distinction between Ripple's sales to retail and institutional investors. As reported, Judge Torres ruled that Ripple's programmatic sales on digital exchanges were non-securities. This is because these retail buyers did not expect a profit directly from Ripple's efforts. In contrast, Judge Torres considered Ripple's past XRP sales to institutional investors to be securities. According to her, institutional buyers of XRP expected to make gains via the efforts of Ripple. However, the Terra judge disagreed with Judge Torres' reasoning, stating that the Howey test, a long-standing security test in the U.S., does not distinguish between the types of buyers that Judge Torres drew. With many legal experts, including Ripple's COO Stuart Alderodi, commenting on Judge Rakoff's ruling and how it affects the Ripple case, Attorney Deaton has also joined the debate. In a recent thread, Attorney Deaton noted that the Terra judge's ruling is not as inconsistent as many people have made it seem. Additionally, Deaton was unsurprised that Judge Rakoff addressed Judge Torres' decision, given that Tara asked the court to dismiss the SEC lawsuit using the Ripple ruling. His only surprise was how the judge chose to address the Ripple decision. He pointed out that the Tara judge has built a reputation for being critical and assertive, 
while criticizing other judges' decisions. Furthermore, Attorney Deaton dismissed claims that Rakoff was working in favor of the SEC, highlighting how the judge has previously criticized the regulatory agency. Per Deaton, Judge Rakoff is known for his strong opinions and for being a consumer activist in his rulings. Based on Judge Rakoff's role in protecting investors, Attorney Deaton said he would not criticize him. The pro-XRP lawyer asserted that Judge Rakoff faced a different circumstance than what Judge Torres experienced in the Ripple case. He explained that Terra promised investors that it would funnel the money made from its crypto sales into the overall project while assuring holders of massive gains. Because of the defendants, Terra's unique approach, Rakoff found that these statements would have motivated secondary purchasers just as much as institutional purchasers, said Deaton. Attorney Deaton said Judge Rakoff's findings about the expectation of profit by retail buyers of Terra tokens do not contradict what Judge Torres said in her ruling. Meanwhile, Deaton pointed out where Judge Rakoff erred in his ruling. He asserted that Judge Rakoff was wrong by stating that Torres focused on the type of investor in the ruling. According to Deaton, Rakoff reacted to the inconsistent result between retail and institutional investors after the Ripple judge applied the Howey test to the facts of the case. He stressed that when Judge Torres applied the Howey test to the facts of the case, institutional investors entered into a common enterprise with Ripple, thus constituting an investment contract. On the other hand, retail buyers bought XRP from digital exchanges without knowing whether they purchased the coin from Ripple. Thus, they did not expect any profit from the company's efforts. Despite stating that the rationale of the Securities Act is to protect retail investors, Deaton said it is not Judge Torres' duty to ensure that the results are consistent with policy considerations behind the 1934 Securities Act. Her job is to fairly and objectively and without favor or passion, apply the test to each type of XRP transaction alleged by the SEC to violate the law. After an objective Howey application to the facts before the judge, the result is the result, regardless of the level of sophistication of the investors. Period, he said. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. What are your thoughts on XRP? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, then be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any new future videos, then be sure to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification under this video. So that you're notified the next time we upload a video on the latest XRP and cryptocurrency news. Until the next video comes out, you can watch our other videos about XRP or other cryptocurrencies. Thank you for watching and we will see you again in the next video. Goodbye.